Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that. Overall, we had a red day in the stock market on Friday. Enphase Energy leading the pack down 8.6%. Meta right after that down 4.5%. After a huge rally, we did talk all about Meta stock in one of our last videos, so make sure you check that out. And we also have JPM Morgan down 3.7% as the banking run continues and the fear mongering and mass hysteria continues. Money is pouring over to Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin's to $28,000 per coin. If you are a crypto investor, we just did a full update on my other YouTube channel, The Daily Cryptocurrency, so make sure you check it out there. We talk about the three best coins. But in this video, what we're going to be talking about is an earnings update. So let's go over March 20th earnings calendar week and see what's ahead. We have Foot Locker reporting Monday before the open, and it's a pretty slow week, by the way. Earnings week is slowly coming to an end, and it's going to ramp up with bigger companies here soon. Tuesday before the open, we have Canadian Solar. We have Tencent Music Entertainment, so that'll be an interesting one. Okay, we have Huya, which is a gaming company. So if you are a gaming investor or if you know the gaming industry well, you might have an edge on Huya. We also have BitFarms reporting after the close on Tuesdays when it starts heating up because we have Nike, one of the world's biggest shoe brands and shoe companies, apparel companies in general. We have GameStop, which is an interesting stock because all the meme trading going on recently. Wednesday before the open, we have Petco. We have Spectrum Winnebago. We have Shoe Carnival, which will be interesting because we already had Foot Locker and Nike report. So for Shoe Carnival to be reporting, um, you can look at some of those earnings and based off Foot Locker's earnings, you could take out an option on Shoe Carnival here, although it is risky. Now make sure you stay to the end of the video because we're going to go over some of my opinions on the best stocks to be watching this week and if I'm going to be taking a call or a put option on some of these stocks as well. Wednesday after the close we have Chewy reporting. Thursday another slow day with General Mills reporting. Some of its other competitors have all already reported so General Mills could be a good one to play um, for earnings option contracts. Friday we have Express. Okay, so let's do an overall update first, then we'll narrow in on specific stocks. So what we see and what we've been noticing is Wall Street's attention has turned away from corporate earnings uh, announcements and has that has actually been very understandable, drawn to the uncertainty in the financial industry and the Federal Reserve's upcoming decisions that's coming this week as well. However, we do see earnings still chugging along into the penultimate week of March, with a handful of critical reports set to come out. In particular, a number of reports are due from consumer-facing companies like Nike, on holding Foot Locker are set to provide key insights on apparel and footwear sales, while both Petco and Chewy will provide investors with information on the pet industry dynamic. We also have some EV charging names like Volta, ticker symbol VLTA, Chinese, and also EVGo are among other highlighted names joining a host of Chinese tech names due to report during this week. Okay, so for Foot Locker on Monday, we can kind of skip over them just because they're already going to be reporting as soon as the market opens. So there's nothing we can really do about that. So we want to skip over to Tuesday because this is we can still take some call options or put options out on Nike, depending on the information we find in this video here on Sunday's report. So here we see Nike following Foot Locker's report the previous day, which will gather a lot of information um, from Foot Locker's report to take into Nike's earning report. Nike is expected to post its financial third quarter update after the bell on Tuesday. Shares of the Oregon-based footwear giant have run over 15% higher in the past six months preceding its earnings report, rebounding sharply since the start of calendar Q4 2022. We also see that analysts have trimmed EPS expectations 21 times while revisiting revenue estimates upward with the same frequency. The consensus sell side rating on the stock remains a buy however small research shop redburn issued a loan sell rating on the stock 
just days before the earnings report. The company is currently locked in litigation with Lululemon over patent infringement. We're expecting an EPS coming in positive 0.54. Consensus revenue 11.44 billion. Earnings insight, Nike has beaten EPS estimates eight consecutive quarters in a row on their EPS. So there's a very good chance they beat EPS with rising above revenue expectations, six out of eight reports. So there's a good chance that Nike comes in with a double beat on earnings and on revenue. Also reporting um, Tuesday, we have uh, get a GameStop, which we'll go over a little bit deeper too, ticker symbol GME, Tencent Music, TME, and those are the ones I'm really interested in. Wednesday, we have Chewy, pet-focused online retailer, headlines a host of results due on Wednesday. The Florida-based company is set to post its fiscal fourth quarter results after the closing bell. Shares of Chewy have risen sharply to start the 2023 year, but remain well below their pandemic-driven peak. The sell-side consensus remains a buy as both Roth MKM and Wedbush shifted to bullish ratings in the months leading up to the, to the earnings results. However, uh, Seeking Alpha Quant team maintains a hold, handing Chewy a failing grade on their valuation. So they're a little bit overvalued in some analysts' eyes here. Okay, early in 2023, Chewy's management indicated a continued focus on telehealth efforts, which is a great idea. We're expecting EPS to come in negative this quarter with negative 10 cents on their EPS. Consensus revenue uh, for the revenues, $2.64 billion. An insight on their earnings, Chewy has beaten EPS and revenue estimates five out of the past eight quarters. So they don't have the best odds when it comes to earnings. We're going to have to dive a little bit deeper. Make sure you do a lot of your own research and even join the Discord also because we're going to be doing polls and deep dive research on these earnings calls too on Chewy and on Nike. Now the last one we'll talk about in this article is going to be a Thursday report, March 23rd, General Mills. Okay, ticker symbol GIS will likely be one of the most closely watched reports due on Thursday as the consumer staple readies to present its fiscal third quarter results in the pre-market hours of Thursday. Shares of the Minnesota-based cereal manufacturer have risen sharply in the past month, um, appearing to be benefited from the market unease admin the collapse of multiple financial institutions. The recent rise admin market unrest was predated by strong guidance offered at the conference, a big conference in late February as well. UBS recently selected the stock as a top dividend pick for 2023. The consensus EPS is coming in at around a dollar per share. It's pegged at 92 cents. Consensus for revenue estimates is 4.95 billion. And some insights, we can see that G General Mills has beaten EPS estimates eight, eight consecutive quarters in a row with rising above revenue expectations five times out of those reports so there's a good candidate for a call option as well so let's dive a little bit deeper into gamestop here we see the stock leads a, a meme rally the skeptic sees significant cash burn ahead shares of gamestop and other meme stocks outpaced the broader market rally on thursday but as the video game retailers fiscal fourth Quarter report, an analyst warns of cash burn ahead. GameStop's latest run comes ahead of its earnings report on Tuesday. Um, the analyst, Michael Patcher, who has been a critic of the stock ever since it soared, admin high short interest and retail investors' enthusiasm, believes the firm will report a fiscal fourth quarter sales decline of 4% to $2.15 billion with a net loss of $0.18. Cents. Patcher reiterated an underperformance and a $5 price target in a Thursday note, despite the enthusiasm for retail investors hoping to relive past meme stock runs. 
Patcher notes that the business hasn't caught up. The shares remain at trading levels that are disconnected from the fundamentals of the business due to irrational support from some retail investors. But let's look at the technicals of what's going on. Charting the way. I always start with the chart and this time is no different. Technical analysis take the guesswork and emotions out of investing for me anyway. And that's why I always use it as the basis for any decision I make with owning my money. GameStop's chart looks much better than it did last time, so let's take a look. When I say that it's looking better, by the way, I'm not saying it's a screaming buy. It's far from it. However, I do think the balance of risk versus reward has shifted firmly into the hands of the bulls, whereas I saw it the other way back in December. The downward trend is very much intact, as you can see from above, so that's why I'm not pouncing at the table but to my eye, the odds of a double bottom having been put in look quite high. The key for the reaction from the market to the earnings report is this. Is the double bottom respected or does it break? I marked a zone of support where I used the candles bodies and then the spike lows. For the double bottom, you can use either. And I always tell subscribers that support levels are areas, not specific points down to the penny. With that in mind, we have a support in the area of $15 to around $16 per share. Why do I think that this is a double bottom? Price action for one. We also have the PPO and the 14-day RSI both putting in positive divergences along with the double bottom. That essentially means the bearish momentum is, is waning while price is bouncing off the support. That generally means the trend is more likely to change. And in this case, it would be bullish. To sum up the chart, I was very bullish on GameStops in the mid 20s, but the stock has seceded a third of its market cap since then. That's made it more attractive and the double bottom has only bolstered the bull case. I'm not suggesting you run out and buy it, but I am suggesting that there, that being bearish here is too risky. So in my opinion, either way you slice the cake for AMC, it's a super risk going on. It's at $4.22 right now. We've seen it down 26% in the past month. And in just in February 28th, we saw AMC as high as $7.81 per share and a 44% sell-off from those levels just in the past three weeks. So needless to say, AMC has been going through some pain in the stock price, we can see it is at a three month support of around $3.80 to $4.25. Okay, and we can see some upside on AMC to around $5.50 in my opinion. So in my opinion, the analyst on Seeking Alpha is right. I think that the bulls have more upside and the risk first reward is better for the bulls. Um, you know, to see AMC sell off to around a dollar fifty or even two fifty per share is probably less likely than seeing AMC rally to around seven dollars and fifty cents um, or higher. Now, with that being said, keep in mind that the with the financial report coming up, it could really sway the stock either way, and that's not going to base off the technicals at all. So this week. AMC's price action and price movement this week is going to depend more on fundamentals and less on technicals, making this trade a little bit too risky. However, if you do have expendable money, then a call option on AMC could prove beneficial. However, before you do that, I would recommend spending at least 15 to 30 minutes doing some research on AMC earnings before taking a call option. Nike, by the way, is a stock in my long-term dividend portfolio. It is up considerably in uh, the last few months, up around 40 to 30% from lows of around $88 per share when I was buying a little, a little bit heavier. I have a price alert set at $95 per share. 
I think that's a pretty fair area. But if we scroll down and take a look at what's going on here, we can see that the PE ratio is 34, implying that it's a little bit overvalued compared to the uh, the rest of the S&P 500. However, Nike has a great moat, implying that it could be, tr it's, you know, it's okay for it to be trading at a little bit heavier of a PE ratio. However, I would like to see that PE ratio under 25 and closer to the low 20s. We also have a dividend yield of one, which is pretty low, but for Nike, at least they're paying anything at all. Remember, Nike beats on their EPS and their earnings a lot of times in a row, but there's no guarantee that that's gonna make the stock price go up. So a call on earnings could be risky for Nike as well. However, if we look at how the stock price has performed when they've reported earnings in the past we can see that little blue e right there um, is an earnings report and the stock price went up after the e so therefore it went up last earnings um, it went down the earnings before that you can see the blue e there and then the stock price going down here it went down again. So even though they beat their EPS and their revenue, the stock price still could go down if there's bad guidance or um, a slew of other things. This one here we saw on a 321, March uh, 2021, we saw them beat earnings and the stock price went up. If we keep going farther back to see how um, Nike has re uh, stock has responded to their earnings reports here we see that it did go up when it reported earnings there and we also have General Mills reporting earnings which will be interesting as well they're down 7.95 percent in the past three months by the way and up 26 percent in the past year so they are outpacing the stock market by the way, up 58% in the past five years. And they're a stock that's pretty close to 52-week highs and pretty close to all-time highs, which are around $85 per share. And the current price is $79 per share. If we scroll down, we can see the market cap, $47 billion, which is outstanding to see that they have such a big company and they own so much. They provide segments in North America, Australia, convenience stores, uh, food services, pet, Asia, Latin America. The Northern American retailer include grocery stores, mass merchandisers, membership stores, natural food chains, drug stores, dollar stores, discount stores, um, e-commerce, grocery providers. And the list goes on and on and on of things that General Mills owns. Many name brand companies as well. So that's why they have a $47 billion market cap. They have a PE ratio, by the way, of 16, implying that they're a way better deal than Nike. And they're a way better deal than the rest of the S&P 500, especially with a dividend attached to them of 2.67%. So I think that this is a really great stock and I want to be buying them, but I want to put my price alert closer to 65 or even $60 per share to be buying um, some G General Mills. Okay, so this is a great stock, great dividend stock. I'm going to be really watching this stock for earnings and see if it can fall even if it falls down to around $71, $72 per share, I think starting a position is going to be good for me in a dividend portfolio for long term. I think that this is a company that can continue to grow. And let me know if you want me to do a deeper dive on General Mills and dive into all of the different brands that this company owns, all the different cereals, the chains, the food stores, grocery stores, etc. Let me know if you guys want to see that. And just thank you guys for all the love and support you have been showing on the channel, the YouTube channel, and the Instagram. Now 196,000 followers. If you want to join my close friends list and see exactly what I'm buying, when I'm buying, and become the next success story, hit success number eight, hit success number seven, read some of the positive results, hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars gains on just Friday before lunch, 162% gain with a 600% gain. Also, absolutely knocked it out of the park. 
hit a home run, hit six home runs with that 600% gain there. We also saw a $1,900 gain, $2,000, 51% gain, another 544% gain. So if you want to join the list and be part of the program with thousands and thousands of other people and success stories and traders and top traders and want to pick their brains and be a part of the group chat message me on instagram taking a few more signups here to be part of that experience and develop your stock market skills now i also just put out a new video for cryptocurrency investors on my other my only other instagram by the way i only have two the daily stock market and the daily cryptocurrency with a hundred thousand followers each okay so don't fall for any of those scams there's only two accounts the daily stock market and the daily cryptocurrency are my only two official accounts and on youtube on the daily cryptocurrency i just put out a new video for cryptocurrency investors so if you love bitcoin ethereum and other altcoins make sure you check that video out smash a thumbs up on those videos share both of these videos this video and the cryptocurrency with a friend thank you guys for all the love and support and i'll see you in the next video remember don't time the market buy the market peace